Hey everyone, I've been developing a technique to electropolish aluminum. Uh, I haven't found much on the internet regarding this technique, so I thought I'd share what I've learned. This is an unknown aluminum alloy, and as you can see, I've electropolished it here, and this is the stock finish. This is another bar, this is known to be 6061 aluminum, and the finish right in this area here is the mill finish that comes on the metal, uh, you know, as I bought it from McMaster. And as you can see, even without any mechanical polishing whatsoever, you get this nice finish here. So, let me tell you about it. You don't need much exotic equipment to electropolish aluminum. I'm going to show this method with just pure phosphoric acid, and you can get this on eBay. It's actually not even that expensive. And uh, a thermometer, a glass or plastic vessel that can hold uh, about 100 degrees C or less liquids. Uh, then you need something to heat up the solution. I'm going to use this immersion heater but you could also use a hot plate or a, a stove or something with a heat spreader like that. Uh, you need an aquarium air pump and an air stone or a pump inside the vessel that can swirl the liquid around and create some agitation and a standard car battery charger for a power supply. Of course, if you have better equipment, you'll get better process control. So if you have a bench supply that can do constant voltage and constant current control, it'll be better. If you have a heat controlled hot plate, uh, it'll be better. But this is sort of the basic uh, minimum set of equipment. This is 75% phosphoric acid. And in comparison to other concentrated acids, it's actually not such a dangerous thing to handle. But you'll still want to use gloves, uh, splash protection, and eye protection. So I'm going to pour out uh, about half a beaker's worth. In fact, if you're doing this on larger parts, you'll want to have a much larger container of acid just to keep the temperature more stable. Just to demonstrate this technique, I'm just going to use a small amount of acid here. I'm going to put the immersion heater in the acid and then add this thermometer here. And we're targeting about 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're at temperature, so I'm going to take the thermometer out and add two scrap pieces of stainless steel, and these will form half of our circuit. I'll connect these together electrically with an alligator clip. Okay, I've got the air pump turned on, and I'm going to put the air stone in there and then use a clip to hold it to keep it from floating. I've got the battery charger on and the negative side connected to the two stainless plates that are there. I'll connect the positive side to the piece that we want to polish and then add that to the bath and make sure of course that it doesn't short out. Okay, after just a few minutes, let's see what we've got here. I'm going to use some distilled water just to get the acid off right away. As you can see, it's done a really good job of polishing it already in just a few minutes. Here's the piece we just polished, and you can note a couple things about it. One is that the uh, part of the metal that wasn't submerged actually got a little damaged from the acid spraying on it. So you can't halfway submerge parts that you want to electropolish. You pretty much have to submerge the whole thing. Second, there's a bit of pitting going on in here. You can see there's sort of a, a rough surface, and it's actually a little bit better here near the surface, but down here, or the surface of the polishing solution, but down here there's this pitted uh, texture. This is probably caused by the electrochemical action of the polishing bath, and uh, I'll show you why that is in just a minute. I was able to find a chart on the internet that helped explain some of the results that I was getting. This shows voltage on the y-axis and current divided by area, that's the area of the part that we're going to polish, on the x-axis. And there's three distinct zones that are uh, identified by the slope of the, of the curve. So in this first region, it's mostly linear, but then there's a dip in a relatively flat region, and then it takes off over here. And so what's happening is that in this sort of low current region over here, what we actually are doing is etching the aluminum, not polishing it. And this happens because the etching takes place preferentially at these grain boundaries, and what happens is we just end up digging into the material a little bit. If we increase the amount of current uh, per unit area, what happens is, this is complex and I actually don't fully understand it myself, but the solution will form a viscous layer on top of the surface, and this actually has the effect of reducing bumps. And so if there, were, if there was a, a sharp edge sticking out of the part, you know, a little burr, then that burr is exposed on more sides 
than all these other flat regions are. And so it gets preferentially beaten down, polished away, because it has more surface area on this little spot. And the density of the fluid and the uh, concentration of the electrolyte and the base metal and the voltage and everything basically affects this whole thing. Of course, I tried to collect data that looked like this graph and set my oscilloscope up to, to try to generate this, but uh, I couldn't do it. So I don't know if this applies to specific blends of uh, electropolishing solutions. Most of the patents and other information that I found on the internet did not suggest using pure phosphoric acid. They almost always suggested blends of uh, sulfuric and phosphoric and sulfuric and ethylene glycol and all kinds of other things. And I tried lots of those blends and still was never able to produce a graph like this. But anyway, the reason that we were seeing pitting like this over here is because at much higher current densities, uh, there's a lot of gas produced. And if a gas bubble is on the surface, it can't be electrochemically polished because there's a big gas bubble in the way. There's no liquid making contact. So uh, you, you can't go too fast, basically, because you're limited by this hydrogen production problem. One thing that helps is adding a little bit of surfactant to the polishing solution. And I forgot to mention earlier that you could put a drop of dishwashing liquid in there uh, just to lower the surface tension and help these bubbles break away from the surface more easily. To sum up, the recipe that I recommend is 75% phosphoric acid at 75 degrees C, and you want to use about 100 milliamps per square centimeter. And conveniently, this comes out to be just about right for battery charger voltage, you know, kind of in the neighborhood of 14 volts or so. Okay, see you next time. Bye.